What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Havoc OS on this device and this is the first December 2019 build let me show you how does the settings looks like here we have the about phone and in the Android version we have the Havoc OS logo up top and the Android version is of course Android 10 let me go back the Havoc version is 3.0 and the security patch is still of November 5th and over here the build date as you can see 1st December 2019 and here is a build number and stuff and the stock kernel is red plus over here it says and let me go back and in the system section we do not get any system updater and even the build like type is kind of funny let me show you here is how the file looks like and as you can see it is like about 700 MB and the file name shows as fake it is official kind of but actually the file name is funny it says fake instead of official so that's how it is and you need the g apps to flash this rom let me tell you to use the android 10 bit g apps and use the sw version or the setup wizard version so that you can set up your rom before using it so one thing i'm noticing in the settings panel over here is really interesting that is this show me parts as you can see if you go into here we have the like haptic feedback or the vibrator motor strength you can set it to like 45 percent and stuff by default it is at 80 and in the display color section you have the whole screen like color changing option like full screen rgb option is there and you can have the saturation value contrast and hue etc you can make the display like fully grayscale even if you want to and like there are a lot of color changing options over here then there is this xiaomi dose for the ambient display and stuff and there is thermal settings so you can choose like these things to be on the performance and gaming and extreme battery and the normal battery settings you can choose the performance settings from here and we have the mi audio direct and if you enable it you have the like these kind of options youth edition mi piston etc options are there and right now my bluetooth device is connected to it so as you can see it shows the bluetooth battery percentage and stuff over here and the bluetooth audio is working fine here no issues like the redmi k20 pro or the like redmi note 7 pro on the evolution x now let me go back we have a preset choosing option you can choose it to be rock jazz etc and the sound output via the headphone jack as well is really good now let me show you the customization panel here is how it looks like and over here if you're connected to a bluetooth device and stuff it will show up top on the settings so that really looks good and over here if you go into the configuration center there are all your customizations we also have a about section over here and there is status bar we have the clock and date then custom logo brightness control double tap to sleep etc options are there so as you can see these brightness control through the status bar and let me show you the double tap to sleep now so as you can see this works fine too and once you like let me show you if you decrease the brightness now double tap to sleep and unlock the phone with the fingerprint scanner the brightness just like goes high so that is one bug that i have found but not a major issue i can like definitely control the brightness whenever i want and there is network traffic indicator we have the status bar and disabled option quick settings header option for the network traffic then we have carrier label then battery icon you can choose a battery icon to be portrait circle dotted circle and field or hidden then we have the battery percentage we can enable it or like enable while charging or you can totally disable it there is status bar icons so you can like set these faulty and hotspot etc icons from here and you can enable all the icons like headset and stuff there is hd icon instead of vault if you want to use that then there is 4g icon then bluetooth battery status and stuff so these options are there in the status bar now let's move on to the quick settings over here we have the tile title then vibrate on toggle touch and quick pull down is there we can set it to right left or we can disable it then there is battery estimates and there is battery opacity header image and column and row number customization for the quick settings panel and you can choose the brightness pos like slider position to be on the top or like hidden or even on the bottom let me go back we have the screen option so it takes a little bit of time and here you can change the screen like curve values so yeah you can change the corner values if you want to but right now by default i like it and in the ambient display we have the battery level then always on display and double tap to check phone is there but the double tap to like wake and stuff is a little weird as you can see sometimes it does work sometimes it doesn't that i have noticed but double tap to wake and stuff is there now let me show you in the button section 
we have the power menu and advanced reboot option is there for both the lock screen and normal mode let me show you so here we have the advanced reboot and stuff and you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot or however you want it now we have the screen of power button torch if you like want this you can enable it for long press power button torch and let me show you as you can see this works fine now let me quickly show you the fingerprint scanner speed again and the fingerprint scanner speed i feel is not bad it is quite fast in my opinion at least and we also have this rotation kind of thing whenever you rotate your phone it appears as you can see over here this black rotation button we also have the volume rockers customization from here and this is how the volume panel looks like you can expand it just like this and you can even change the playback device so that's good and in the gesture settings we have the system gestures and i have been using this android 10 gestures of course as you can see and the android 10 gestures are working fine here swipe to take screenshot is there you can just swipe three fingers to take the screenshot it works and screen off gesture is there you can have this double tap like to toggle flash and stuff but i'm not sure if it will actually work yes it does work as you can see but right now it is not turning off the torch so yeah so yeah wake device does work and even like double tap to sleep on the lock screen works but the torch like did not go off with the double tap so you can set multiple gestures from here like from the screen of gestures really good feature let me go back and we have the navigation bar if you're using the on-screen nav bar this feature will help you and you can set it to invert layout and stuff if you're into those and in the lock screen we have the double tap to sleep media cover art then pocket detection and there is fingerprint authentication vibration fingerprint error vibration etc and we also have the status bar and quick settings and charging info is there but let me tell you there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner you have to enter your pin after you reboot every time at least once and we have the notification section over here we can disable heads up and stuff there is charging led and the notification led if you are like wondering about it it is working fine file charging and stuff and there is vibrate on click connect and call waiting and disconnect etc so in call vibrations are there and talking with the stock dialer yes it does have a call recording option and stuff and volte calls are working even with bluetooth and like normal earpiece as well then there is the animation option and you can have like whole UI animation from here you even have the quick setting tile animations then we have the battery saving option I don't know like what's the use of it and in the misc we have the wake up on charge disabling option and there is also this charging animation whenever you plug in it does the pixel kind of animation looks really cool so no complaints regarding that let me go back and in the like battery settings over here this is how the battery settings panel looks like and the battery life well I would say I got about five to six hours of screen on time so you can definitely expect about six hours of screen on time with this rom's battery life let me go back and in the display settings we have the night light mode then adaptive brightness or auto brightness live display is there again and there is screen attention mode if you want to use that and like once you scroll down you will find more things like styles and wallpapers and you can customize these things pretty much easily and there is dark theme option of course if you're into the dark theme you can definitely use this and accent color option is there there is uh, like too much accent color options red flat pink indigo and like lot of accent color options are present you can definitely scroll through it it is that much so no issues with the accent color options we have the headline and body fonts option you have these many options as you can see and icon shape is there now let me show you the sound settings over here we have the screenshot disabling sound and stuff charging vibration and stuff you can disable them Vibrate on calls is there and of course the Mi Audio Direct is present inside the Xiaomi parts. Now what do I think about this ROM? Well I would say for daily driving this is quite a nice ROM because like we get the MIUI camera by default over here so that is one really great thing and I like it that the portrait mode and stuff everything is working fine here so this is what you get by default no issues with this MIUI camera even video and stuff let me tell you this is not a ANX camera this is like totally pure stock MIUI camera and everything over here should be working and you can also install Gcam if you want to if you don't know like how to install it and what Gcam to use here is a card for you and this Gcam and stuff is working fine so no issues even with a Gcam 7 yes it is quite laggy but it is working fine the stock launcher here is the pixel launcher and it does not have any kind of like much more customizations but you can swipe down anywhere on the home screen as you can see to get to the quick settings panel or the quick toggles and to the left we have the google now cards of course and there is no double tap to sleep in the home screen anywhere so that is how it is 
and the IR blaster present up top on the device is working fine on this ROM. I have tested it with this LED RGB remote app and this works. Now talking about Google Pay, well you won't be getting the Google Pay by default at least working. So for that if you want to use Google Pay, you have to install Magisk and use Magisk Guide which I did. Let me show you. I have like flashed this Magisk version 20.1. And if you want to flash it, I'll be putting the link of the zip file in the description box below. So don't worry. And over here we have the magic hide option. And just like go here, then what you have to do is use this like right option, like whatever you want to use. Just tap on this right option on the Google Play services and then Google Pay and your Google you can do it too. So the two recommended things will be the Google Pay and the Google Play services. So once you do these, you can have your Google Pay working. And now let's talk about the RAM management and like performance over here. Well, I would say like in terms of flashing and stuff, this ROM has been like a little bit weird because I have been using the 29th November build on the same Redmi Note 5 Pro and I switched, I tried to dirty flash the first December build on top of that. Well, that did not work out well. It went back to the recovery again. I have been using the Orange Fox recovery latest one. I'll put the link of that too in the description box below if you need that for Redmi Note 5 Pro. Yes, I have switched to the like Orange Fox recovery even on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. And to flash this ROM, you have to be on the Pi firmware. So make sure you are on the Pi firmware. And as you can see, the RAM management is pretty good. So once you are on the Pi firmware and if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is a card and that is how you can be on Pi firmware and you can flash the like Orange Fox recovery instead of that like TWRP recovery. So that is how it is and you just need to like wipe cache Dalvik system data. Once you do that, you just flash the ROM file, the gapps file and reboot normally. You don't need to flash any other zip files. So that is how it is. Even the RAM management is good. So here is the Android score. For daily driving, I would say this is a pretty great ROM. So in the graphic settings in PUBG, you can see we have the smooth and medium settings. Then we have the balance and stuff, but I did not change the profile from the Xiaomi parts, but this is what you get by default on the balanced, I think, and it won't change. I think I'm not sure, but you, you do get the smooth and medium and then balanced and medium HD is not available. So I won't quite recommend you guys to flash this ROM just for gaming. This is not a gaming ROM or something. You won't even get the like higher settings for the like PUBG and stuff. So that is how it is regarding the gaming performance here. But otherwise, I would definitely like recommend you if you want to taste Android 10 with a lot of customizations, then this is a quite great option for you for the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one.